preacher, this is killing us. Good. You can't really see the spirit of God excelling your life until your flesh is just dead. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Let's look at your neighbor and say, don't miss the move. Don't miss the visitation, Luke 14, or 19, 44. Remember what the Holy Ghost said a couple Sundays ago? Go to the ant. Some have left the ant since I preached that. The ant discerns what season it is, Proverbs 30, verse 25. It's harvest time. It's summer. It's time. Come on, somebody. An ant discerns the time, and she goes for the food. I'm telling you, the food is now. The visitation is now. The table is spread now. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Don't excuse yourself from this supper. Somebody shout it's supper time. And if you don't understand that, you'll never see the super time. Change your plans. Plan to meet God at his table tonight. And listen to the word of the Lord. Don't forget what Holy Ghost just prophesied. If you got something you can give to the pastor, you give it before you leave. And if you can't, God said he'll give seed to the sower. He'll give it to you before this Sunday. Make sure you obey God. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. God, I thank you for what you're about to do in these altars right here to the hungry. Only the hungry come to the supper. Only the hungry, hallelujah, take him at his invitation. Oh, and they make plans to meet him at his table. Do you really want more of God? Hallelujah, if you excuse yourself to just settle where you've been, to just stay where you're at. And is the enemy of enough, amen, the thing that tells you you don't need to get any closer, that you got all you need. Some of you got filled with the Holy Ghost years ago, even as a child, and spake with other tongues. But some of you ain't speaking tongues in years. Some of you ain't speaking tongues in months. Some of you used to give out messages and interpret them, and you don't even do it no more. You used to have gifts operating in you, and some of you ain't never seen it, and others have, and some of you that have hadn't seen it in a long time. God said, I ain't no different now than I was then. If anybody's got far away, it's not been me. Remember when you first got saved, you couldn't get enough of church. Times are not to blame. Times is still the same. Time is still time. It's our priorities that have changed. Come, Holy Ghost, come, come. He demanded in Come, Holy Ghost, surround me, oh God. God, we expose the excuse, God, tonight. No more excuse, only expectation. The Lord, I know there are legitimate excuses. Life continues, and people have things they have to take care of. And Lord, you know that too. So Lord, we're not saying there's anything wrong with some excuses, but God, the majority of it is just a loss of passion for you. So that's why we say what we say, so it might open the heart that's been deceived and darkened. Holy, so you can do more. Yeah, I want to know your name. You're all 
17 says, I love them that love me. That almost sounds like the love of God's conditional. That ain't really what it means, though it sounds like it does. It just means God loves everybody. But what he means, those that'll seek me will find me. Those that'll love me will experience my love on levels others don't. Those that'll give me that time those that'll sacrifice, that'll love me above the pleasures, that'll love me above anything in this life. Don't forget, Elisha, you can have a double portion, but it's probably gonna be a hard thing. Be there, stay with me, go with me, cause when you do, when I'm taking up, if you're there with me, you can have what I got. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank God. My God, that's powerful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I can't 
didn't stop praying for her just yet. Capsule and go. There's been, there's been some there's been some awesome services in the last two weeks that have exceeded as God said in Ephesians 119 he would exceed his greatness that's his nature to exceed the great time you've seen him give the past time he loves to exceed that's why it insults him when we just desire the same and don't want no more but Listen up. You remember the night where there was a lot of people here and it almost, I just felt a dull of hearing. It was like there was a dullness in hearing. It was on a Monday night, I believe it was, and I was preaching a prayer and seeking God. Weren't no shout. Message was lengthy, but it was a night of intimacy with God. See, we don't remember those services. We remember the services that came next. Quick, sharp, and everybody laid out. But that night, on that service where some didn't even come back after that, Cause it was almost like a dullness of hearing. Cause it weren't a message about what God's gonna do for us, it was a message about us and our response to Him. And some of you got an intense prayer life after that service. The Lord says to remind you that has what has created what's been happening since. So again, what we call a great service may not be what He necessarily calls one of the greatest. Tonight's another night. Tonight's a night that God says, this is one of my greatest. Come on, everybody ain't up here on the platform laid out like the last several services. Come on, somebody. There's not a lot of screaming and jumping and hooping and hollering. But I'm telling you what, somebody's drawing close and I promise you, come that next service, you'll know it. Come that next experience with him, you'll know it. Somebody shout connected. It's right here. It's right here in your midst. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You're all I'm telling you, there's an excuse, God, loose. You think of the excuses you yourself have heard in four weeks. And many of you could have made the same excuse. 